Hello, dear friends. Patrick here. Um, working on chapters four and five today. I'm going to try and see if I can get through chapters four and five, reviewing the book by Richard Dawkins called Outgrowing God, A Beginner's Guide. Um, if I have to break it up into two videos, I will, but let's see if we can make some progress. Chapter four is called The Good Book, and he's got a picture of uh, Abraham and Isaac on the altar there. And so in this chapter, he direct, directly begins to attack the Bible. Um, <clears throat> and I noticed, I hadn't seen this before, but at the beginning of every page, on the left-hand side of the page, he, said, he has the phrase, goodbye God. On e Imagine, on every left-hand side of the page, I never noticed it before, but it, you would think it would be the title of the book called Outgoing God, but instead it says, goodbye God. And... Um, that's the sentiment from the author, Richard Dawkins, probably the most evil human being in our generation who has destroyed more souls than any other uh, individual uh, in our generation. So here we go, chapter four. Uh, I wasn't, I'm not able to write notes in the book because it's a borrowed library book, so the, the, my notes are on a separate piece of paper, which makes it a little more difficult, but that's okay. So in chapter four, he talks about the story of Job, and um, he um, he keeps repeating himself, and he uses um, the story of the Israelites when God told them to go and inherit the promised land. What Dawkins does is something <clears throat> very um, uh, satanic, very mischievous. He compares the Israelites uh, inheriting the land prepared for them by God to uh, Hitler's, uh, the Germans' term of Lebensraum, which is a German term for living space. So he tries to make a direct correlation between the Israelites and um, Hitler. And in fact, he goes even so far, I'm going to try and skip through chapter four quite quickly because, you know, he compares the story uh, of the Bible to uh, like Little Red Riding Hood on page 77, which is very pathetic. He keeps trying to compare the Bible to myth and to children's stories, because again, don't forget, he's targeting children with this book to try and get them to uh, abandon any type of faith in God. And so he uses the term Lebensraum, and he uses this term a number of times. He uses it three times on pages 83 to 84, but then also it comes up later in chapter 5 on page 110. So you'll see that he uses that term to try and uh, compare it to the Israelites. And in fact, he goes so far on page 91 that he gives a almost a full page quote by Adolf Hitler speaking in 1922. Now we know uh, Hitler um, was a psychopathic lunatic. He went bonkers and um, wreaked havoc and caused horrible, horrible tragedies uh, in the late 30s and early 40s, of course. But he point, he takes, he quote minds Hitler and takes a part out where Hitler is talking about his feelings as a Christian. First of all, uh, the quote that he uses, uh, Hitler uh, says that because uh, Jesus uh, used a scourge to drive out the, the, the people that were in the temple. He, he uses that to describe Jesus as a fighter. And so this inspires Hitler and says, yeah, well, Jesus was a fighter. I'm going to be a fighter too, right? Obviously, that was to fulfill prophecy. Jesus, he said, the zeal from your house has consumed me. He was very angry that people were, um, you know, using the temple for commerce instead of for worshiping God, and so he got upset about it, but it was uh, important to fulfill a scripture. And Dawkins also caught, caught, uh, talks about Jesus cursing the fig tree, and, and that was um, also associated with driving the people out of the temple. It was like a, a scapegoat for how he felt about the people in the temple, which Dawkins has no clue about. But let's leave that for now. But this parallel that Jesus tries to make, bringing in these uh, German terms and bringing in uh, uh, this term that he uses called uh, Lebensraum, and then even quoting a full page, uh, this guilt by association technique that he uses. Um, <clears throat> he says, um, he, at least, at least I'll give Dawkins this, at least he admits that 
Hitler was often anti-Christian in his speech. Um, and I mean, it's like saying, well, you know, uh, um, Jim Jones was Christian or, or uh, David Koresh was Christian. I mean, these lunatics, you know, probably Charles Manson thought he was Christian. Um, these psychopathic lunatics that go bonkers, you know, to say, oh, it's similar to... to um, is similar to what the Pope said or similar to what Christians say or similar to Protestant Christianity. He tries to make that guilt bad association and implant that in the reader's mind in chapter four. And he, he goes into the stories uh, from chapter four. And he even says, I've said again and again, he repeats himself on page 92. And he also tells the story of Jephthah that killed his daughter. Remember, Jesus said that the, the his words are spiritual words and he says even that he's spoken in dark sayings he says at one time i'm going to speak tell you clearly about the father but i've spoken to you in these dark sayings the old testament bible a lot of these stories are spiritual words to encourage a a fear of god and uh, uh, Richard Dawkins thinks that's the worst thing in the world is to encourage a fear of God. Um, but that's what they are. They're spiritual words. And um, Dawkins goes on and calls God cruel. He calls him insecure and on and on and on because he doesn't understand the purpose of Scripture. He doesn't understand that the words are spiritual words. Anyway, let's move on to chapter 5. Um, how am I doing for time? Okay, good. I'm making good time. Chapter 5, and on page 95 of chapter 5. Look how Dawkins makes his argument. He says, <clears throat> um, Atheism is simply a lack of belief in anything supernatural, like not believing in flying saucers or fairies. First of all, flying saucers could be military aircraft. They could be actually real things. They're not supernatural things, so I don't know why he makes that comparison. Um, and he's talking about in this passage that um, he especially likes to target Americans. Uh, Dawkins has a hatred for Americans because so many Americans believe in God. And so he hates Americans. And he says that a lot of uh, Americans would rather vote for anybody that has any kind of faith, whether it's a Catholic, a Muslim or Jew, rather than an atheist. He says atheists get uh, disrespect because people think that people that are willing to obey God will will be more righteous and and sensibly so but he complains about that in chapter 5 uh, the chapter 5 is called do we need God in order to be good so let's move on um, page 100 okay so on page 100 he says something here very interesting Dawkins says here he says He's talking about hell. Um, he's talking about hell, the threat of punishment, and, um, you know, the terrifyingness of hell and on and on. And he says here in the middle of page 100, what do you think of people who threaten children with eternal fire after they are dead? He says, in this book, I don't normally give my own answers to such questions, but I can't help making an exception here. He says, I'd say those people are lucky there is no such place as hell because I can't think of anybody who more richly deserves to go there. Do you see how he contradicts himself? He says it's horrible to tell children that there's a hell, but if there was a hell, I wish the parents that told their children that would go there. That's what he's saying in, in, on page 100. Do you see how self-contradictory that is? Hell was created for Satan and his angels. Well, that's where the, the, the spirit that is inside of Richard Dawkins will go. If there's any spirit inside of him that is of God, then that'll be separated out, and that will be the part that goes to heaven. But the bulk of what animates Richard Dawkins is satanic, and that, that's why hell was created for that type of anti-Christian, anti-God spirit. That's what hell is for. Um, he talks about how the top three 
uh, phil, in, on page 101, the top three phil, philanthropic givers in the world, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, and George Soros. He says, these are the people that give the most in the world. They have the most philanthropy, and they're all non-believers, he says. So he, he thinks how great these people are. And then he says, even my own charitable foundation, the Richard Dawkins Foundation for Reason and Science, rushed to give a special charity when they had this uh, disaster in Haiti. There was an earthquake there in 2010. And he says, within three days, this group that he formed called Non-Believers Giving Aid, NBGA, had raised $300,000. Wow, that's such a huge amount of money. That's probably the amount of money that Richard Dawkins makes in a month from selling books, uh, uh, or perhaps even a week from the amount of books that he sold in his life. That's a pittance. That's like a weekend uh, uh, trip for Richard Dawkins and for those other people that he mentions, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, and George Soros, that's even more of a pittance. That's like how much money they make in a day. And he's all proud that they gave $300,000 to Haiti. And the all the money that was raised by these great philanthropic uh, people, he says there that, um, you know, uh, the, 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 the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation uh, gave so much money and so on and so forth, and these other foundations gave so much money. They... they most of the money that they raised for for to send to Haiti, they stole it for themselves. You can you can research that if you want. So anyway, he's talking about um, uh, what else in, in chapter five. And if you were to look at how much Christians gave to Haiti, it would be a hundred times that, or ten times that. Um, let's see here. Uh, he goes through uh, the Ten Commandments. And um, he, t he tries to belittle each of them. I could spend an entire video on that, um, but I'm going to skip over that part because that's going to take me much too long. But I could easily spend an hour on that, how he goes through the entire Ten Commandments. And his purpose of going through the Ten Commandments is he says he doesn't want them on the courthouse walls. He's very upset that in some American cities they put them in their courthouses and he says, oh, that's... That's illegal. They shouldn't be allowed to do that. And then the funny thing I notice is that on page 113, he says, I'm not a communist. He says here, right? I'm not a communist. Uh, but he says, um, he says, uh, it, uh, so, um, uh, here we go. It's surely not a matter of going and grab things. You come, even that, According to some pol political revolutionaries, he says, if you go and grab stuff that's not yours, he says, some political re uh, revolutionaries might be justified. They think the state is justified. Listen to this. They think the state is justified in seizing private wealth and using it for everybody. That's what he says these political revolutionaries want to do. And he says, I'm not a communist, but perhaps you can see where they are coming from. So he says, I'm not a communist, but I sympathize with, with people that want to seize private wealth and use it for everybody. So he, he says, well, I'm not a communist, but I think it's okay to seize private wealth and, and redistribute it for everybody. Of course he's a communist. He just admitted on page 113 that he thinks like a communist. He has communist sympathies, even though with his words he said, well, I'm not a communist. No, no. But I think it's okay for political revolutionaries to, um, to uh, seize private wealth and use it for everybody. So he c contradicts himself there uh, in the same sentence. Um, he misinterprets the law on page 116. He doesn't know what the law is, in quotes. And again, I'm not going to spend too much time on that because that would get too in-depth for this basic cursory review that I'm trying to do. On page 118, he cannot repudiate Jesus' teachings, um, and but he still insists on delivering on page 119 a cynical and negative and ignorant view of every part of Jesus that he possibly can. Um, and then on final to wrap it up on page 121, um, he says that uh, Jesus is just a man, right? On page 121, and that is the summation of his. He's he he cannot repudiate Jesus' teaching, right? Um, he tries to pick out certain things where Jesus, oh, well, that's horrible that Jesus said that, that he, he didn't give respect to his uh, mother or brothers and things like that. So he tries to pick out things. Um, but at the end, he has to say, well, you know, actually, he wasn't a bad man. 
and um, uh, but he was just a man. That's what he says at the uh, in the middle of page um, one twenty one. Just a man, and that is the sentiment of Satan. Satan says oh, he wasn't the son of God. He was just a man, right? This is this is um, the conclusion that Dawkins come to at the end of chapter five. So that's it. We covered chapters four and five in a single video. I'm glad I was able to get those two chapters out of the way. Um, but you can see how how completely Richard Dawkins has given himself over to the efforts of destroying Christianity, of destroying any belief in the Bible, destroying any belief in Jesus, destroying any belief in God. That is his entire soul focus. And what does that give a description of? That gives it a description of the enemy of humanity, who is the serpent of old, Satan the devil, right? He's unable to analyze spiritual things because they are so foreign to him, because he has given his mind and, and entire life outlook and entire purpose over to Satan. And um, this is the result, is you end up having this type of literature, which is targeted at children, don't forget, this is targeted at children to get them to abandon any belief in God. I cannot think of any other individual in history that is more evil than that. I mean, there's some that tried, uh, like uh, Nietzsche or um, Charles Manson, you know, um, Hitler, the example that he uses, of course. And Dawkins uh, probably surpasses all of them because don't forget his legacy is going to continue on after he leaves the earth and people will be influenced by his writing probably for the next hundred years until AI is able to realize and with the advancements in, in uh, science, in quantum uh, theory, uh, this other book that I'm reading uh, uh, currently, uh, Spooky Action at a Distance, is all about quantum entanglement. They will realize that there are unseen elements uh, within our universe that can only be explained by God and all intelligent, uh, perfect force that keeps everything in balance. But until that time, Dawkins is is running rampant. He's destroying entire countries. He destroyed the country of England. He destroyed the Church of England. All these um, so-called intellectuals that get educated quote Dawkins and say, oh, you know, it's all just fairy tales. And it's, that's why I'm an atheist, because I read Richard Dawkins. And so he has destroyed more lives in our generation than any individual in, in the past history. Millions and millions of people are probably can owe their atheism to Richard Dawkins. So that shows you exactly what we're dealing with here, that um, the at the end times, the Antichrist will arise, and many Antichrists have already risen, and that's a prime example. Uh, Richard Dawkins is the most prominent Antichrist of our generation, so we should be aware uh, that these people are alive, they live among us, they have a powerful influence, and you can also see the political overtones that he is trying to affect a, a public policy to prevent any mention of the Ten Commandments or any mention of the Bible in any public space. He is trying to fight against that with all the energy of Satan himself. So we should be aware of these um, uh, enemies to humanity that exist in our society today and pray that we will be protected from their influence and so that we can teach children that God loves us, that he cares about us, and he has a perfect plan uh, for us if we would simply listen to his spiritual words and learn from them. Thanks for watching. God bless you. We'll talk to you again real soon. Bye for now.